Hello, this is Dr. Michael Myers, Associate Professor in Health Sciences at National University in San Diego, California. In this short presentation, I'm going to show you how to conduct a chi-square analysis on some simple data sets. Remember that we have two types of statistical tests. We have parametric tests, which we've been doing in this video series up till now. These include t-tests, two sample and one sample, as well as ANOVA, where the dependent variable is an interval or ratio measurement. Our non-parametric test, which we're going to do in this video, includes variables that are measured on a nominal or ordinal scale. The most common type of non-parametric test that we use in stats is called the chi-square test. It basically tests the relationship between two categorical variables in a cross-tabulation table. So really we're going to look at the differences in proportions between the groups. We often call this a Pearson's chi-square test. An example that I often use in my classes is the example of marriage status and happiness. So remember, before in this video series, we had our three groups of men. So our married, single, and divorce. These are, again, the nominal level variables, their categories. And then we had the dependent variable, which was our outcome variable, looking at their happiness score, which in this case was a ratio variable varying from 0 to 50. We can use this example as a chi-square if we take in the following data. Where now we have the groups married, single, divorced, and the data that two of the married men and two of the single men and seven of the divorced men were on Prozac. We want to look at the research question, is there a statistically significant difference between the marriage status of men and their use of Prozac? We can do the analysis very quickly in StatCrunch. Here you see the data displayed in StatCrunch. So you can go ahead and pause this video if you want to catch up. But I've basically entered all of the data here. So here's our, again, 10 people that are married, 10 of the men that are single, and 10 that are divorced. So again, we're doing 30 subjects. So each row in our table is a subject. Going across the top, I've labeled the variables as status. Again, this is our nominal level variable. They're either in a certain category of being married, single, or divorced. Next is our happiness score. This is what we did our ANOVA analysis on, where our uh, dependent variable here was ratio. And then we have another nominal level variable, the Prozac use. So you can see I've already put that data in here, two being yes in the married group, two being yes in the single group, and then seven being yes in the divorce group. So to do the chi-square analysis, we can easily do that by clicking on the stat tab, just like we did for the beginning of this video series when we looked at cross-tabulation or contingency tables, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to click on Tables, Contingency, and since we have the data, we're going to click With Data. That's going to call up our familiar dialog box, and we can select the variables. Remember that the row variable is the outcome variable, or the dependent variable. Now here we're interested in their Prozac use, right? Their, their marriage status is just a group they were in. That's not very interesting, so we click on Prozac for the row variable. For the column variable, we're going to select their marriage status. Again, we're going to leave score alone because we're doing a non-parametric test. We're just looking at cross-tabulation of two variables, in this case their marriage status and their Prozac use. Unlike before when we were just doing the table, now we can leave this chi-square test for independent selected. We can go ahead and select our row percent, our column percent, percent of total, and the expected count. We can leave this contributions to chi-square off as we don't really need it in our table. We go ahead and click Compute, and StatCrunch will give us the cross-tabulation table, just like we saw in the previous video with cross-tabulation. We can take this table and then cut and paste it into our Word document, and update the table in Word just like we did in the previous video series on cross-tabulation. So we want to put in our percent within row, percent within column, and percent of total. Once we have the table copied and pasted into Word, we can get rid of the top chart here. We can add a row above here to properly label our columns. Again, we can merge these cells to put in the title. We can then label our dependent variable that we put in the rows. This is going to be the Prozac use. And then we can put in our row and percent labels like we did before in cross-tabulation. So the first line will be the row, so that's percent within Prozac use. Next will be the column, so that would be percent within marriage status. Percent of total. And the last row here is our expected count. 
The stat crunch calculated this for us from the table that's in the book, so this expected count is simply the observed frequency in the entire row that the cell is in times the observed frequency for the entire column that it's in divided by the total number of n. So for this example, you can see that it's going to be our 19, that's the row, total for the row, times the total for the column, which is 10, divided by the total number of subjects in the study, so that's 30, and we get our 6.33. So the software calculated all of that for us and performed the chi-square test as well. So from this result, we can say that we have two degrees of freedom. Remember, that's calculated by taking the total number of columns, in this case three, minus one, which is two, times the total number of rows that we have, which is two. So two times one is two, so we have two degrees of freedom. We can just copy down the rest of our labels for our table, and we can just get rid of that expected count for the bottom, because the totals are just going to have the total numbers. So now we have our totals labeled, we have our rows and our columns labeled, and our chi-square test value as well. Here we have a p-value of 0.027. This is below our 0.05 cutoff, so we have a significant result. We can also go and check the calculated chi-square test statistic against the value in the back of the book. So we look on page 416 for the chi-squared value. Again, to find the critical value, we go down the 0.05 level of significance, the R5% cutoff. We go for two degrees of freedom, and we see here that the critical value is 5.99. Our test statistic of 7.177 is greater than our 5.99, again telling us we have a significant result. The use of Prozac here and marriage status are related. Remember that our null hypothesis for a chi-square test is that the two variables are independent or unrelated. Another way to say that is that the proportions across the groups are equal. And our alternative hypothesis is that the two variables are not independent, that they are related, so that the proportions across the groups are not equal. And that's what we have in this case with Prozac use and marriage status. Another example I use often in my classes is a migraine headache example. So before with the Prozac example we had all of the raw data to analyze. We can also do the summary data just like we did the contingency table with summary data and we can perform a chi-square test on the summary data as well. So in this example we have patients suffering from migraine headache. We place the subjects into two groups where one of the groups has a surgery intervention, the other group has a sham surgery so they really didn't have surgery, and then we looked at their outcome, the successful outcome here, meaning that they had at least a 50% reduction in headaches. Here we have two nominal level variables. We have the type of surgery intervention that was done, either the real surgery or the sham, and we have a successful or unsuccessful outcome. Since we don't have the entire data set for this study, we have basically the summary stats. So we can put that into StatCrunch as well as we learned when we did contingency tables in the beginning of this video series. So for that, we go back to StatCrunch, and this time we're going to put in the summary data. So again, here, instead of having each row as a patient, we're going to break up our data into a summary fashion. So again, that first column is going to be the where the dependent variable goes. So this is going to be our yes or no for the success. Our next column is going to be the independent variable. So we have the real surgery and the sham. So basically we're going to reconstruct the end result of our contingency table using the summary functions of StatCrunch. So again, looking at the data, we just need to do a simple bit of math to figure out the totals for each area here. So again, that first column is going to be our listing for our dependent variable. The number of people that had a reduction in pain and actually had the surgery was 41. So the 41 goes here. Those that didn't was the rest. There was 49 out of 41, so eight are left. So eight people did not have a successful outcome. The sham group, we have 26 subjects total, and 15 of them had a successful outcome. So 15 had a yes, and the rest of the 26 did not. So that's 11. So again, this is a summary data that we put together. The dependent variable, the success of the migraine, goes in that first column and then we have our independent variable broken out into the next two columns. To do the summary test, we simply go again to the stat tab. We go to tables, contingency, and now instead of with data, we click with summary. In this dialog box, we select our variables. So again, our row variable is going to be 
the success and we're going to analyze the real and sham group. So we're going to select the real and the sham. Again we're going to select our row percent, column percent, percent of total, and our expected count. And click compute, leaving this chi-square of independence selected by default. So StatCrunch again calculates the expected counts, the row and column percents, and percent of total. So again we would just take this and copy and paste it into our Word document, just as we did for our other example. We can get rid of the top part. Again, adjust our table by adding our labels. Type in our row title, and then label our rows. So again, we're going to have a row percent, so that's percent within, successful outcome, or we could just put outcome. Next is the column percent, so we just hit return. Percent of total and the expected count. Then we just copy this down, get rid of the expected count for the total because we don't need that. And now we have our complete cross tabulation table. Again, then we generated from the summary data. Once we're done, it's going to look just like how we started with our numbers here. So here's our 41, 15, 8, and 11. So to generate the cross tabulation table with all of the row percents and column percents and percent of totals, we just do by entering the data this way into StatCrunch in a summary fashion. So now you can see it calculated the expected count. Now in this example, our expected counts are not equal because we have unequal groups here, right? We have 26 in our sham group and 49 in our real surgical group. But again, it's calculated the expected counts in the same way by looking at the proportions across the rows and the columns. You see the p-value at 0.013, again below our 0.05, so this is a significant result. If we looked at the table, we see this value would be greater than our critical value in the back of the book. One degree of freedom, because here we have a 2 by 2 table, 2 minus 1 times 2 minus 1 is 1 for 1 degrees of freedom. Here we have another significant result. So here you have two examples, one with data and one with the summary data, of, of getting StatCrunch to do this chi-square calculation where it's comparing the observed and expected results across the columns and the rows and calculating for us the chi-square statistic, as well as giving us the probability value to see if we have a significant result.